And it's about the culture of creation industry, how ideas are downloaded into people's minds via fiction primarily, and using high drama, high drama with emotion, emotion plus crisis, the situation in a movie and drama, um, the tremendous method of getting uh, points across. It's almost like coupling an idea with the drama and it's downloaded like a virus into your subconscious and you're being programmed and it's called predictive programming. The technique is ancient and it's an old, old science. Plato in his Republic talks about the culture industry of his own day and how it, it was essential not only for maintaining control over the people by the elite, but that they had to control everything that was given to the public. In other words, anything the public saw in drama on stage was authorized. Not only was it authorized, in ancient Greece, traveling troops of players would come into the cities and do the rounds, and it was compulsory to attend. Everyone, even the slaves, had to attend at least one performance because just like today, they had their agenda and their schedule and their upgrading of the system. And it was done primarily through fiction because the old saying is monkey see, monkey do. And we emulate what we see. It was Plato who identified the simple day-to-day -day advantage of a belief in reincarnation. He resolved that we shall be unafraid of death if at the time of death, it is perceived that the soul merely transfers to another body. Even though Plato had wholeheartedly taken on board the teachings of Pythagoras, it is dangerous to assume that he naturally learned them from his close friend and teacher, Socrates. Socrates was fully aware of all the ideas and philosophies of Pythagoras and other pre-Socratic philosophers, yet he rebelled against them. He claimed that they were more concerned with cosmology than their fellow men and the way in which they ought to conduct their lives. Socrates rejected all the theories of Pythagoras apart from the theory concerning the immortality of the soul. Plato relates the words of Socrates. Well then, our recent argument and the others prove conclusively that the soul is immortal. Now Osiris has as a symbol an eye, and that eye, of course, is the sun. And this eye represents the sun of the underworld. Quote, the arcana, defined as being a secret or hidden knowledge of the ancient mysteries, were never revealed to the profane, defined as those not initiated into the inner mysteries, except through the media of symbols. You're going to find, folks, that symbols mean more than you will ever begin to understand unless you've waded deep into the stream of the mystery Babylon, as I have. This symbol uh, in the Egyptian was a ball of light surrounded by radiant rays. Therefore, the sun was radiating in all directions, lifting up everything that came in contact with bringing death to life out of the earth. That part of the, of the world where the sun was above the horizon was the good part, the life part. Night was the dark part. Night was darkness, mystery, and death. Day was light, brightness, and uh, wisdom. The symbols and the words, the terms, you start breaking it down. It's in Hollywood, it's in movies, it's in music. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't know even know what to say about this. It's just so overwhelmingly obvious to me. Masonry teaches that redemption and salvation are both the power and the responsibility of the individual Mason. Saviors like Hiram Abif, they have a ritual where they go through the raising of uh, Hiram Abif, can and do show the way, but men must always follow and demonstrate each for himself his power to save himself. To build his own spiritual fabric in his own time and way, every man in essence is his own saviour and redeemer, for he does not save, if he does not save himself, he will not be saved. Alright, now it's getting a little bit clearer. Do we need Jesus Christ in all of this? 
Not really. The Masonic author Pearson admits the Masonic legend stands by itself, unsupported by history or other than its own traditions, yet we recognize, readily recognize, in Hiram Abif, this is the one who is symbolically raised from the dead when a Mason in his ritual is called out of the coffin to rise up and uh, receive new life. We recognize Osiris of the Egyptians, the Mithras of the Persian, the Bacchus of the Greek, Dionysius of the Fraternity of the Artifice, and Attis of the Phrygians, whose passion, death, and resurrection were celebrated by these people respectively. So in other words, the ancient religion which counterfeited the religion of salvation in Jesus Christ is the religion of masonry. So it's the old pagan religion which has another deity. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. Is it good enough?